Merry Christmas. And welcome to worship today at Union Presbyterian Church. I offer thanks and praise to God for each and every one of you who is able to join us for this worship service this evening. Um, we begin our time together. I just want to say welcome to anybody who is a guest or anybody who is watching us online. It's so great to have you here. If you are watching us online on the live stream, please be sure to type your name in the comments and say hello so that we can be sure to fully include you as part of our ministry. But before we get started today, let us just take a deep breath. It's been a busy time of year. Let's take a deep breath as we prepare to worship. Let us join together in the call to worship. Good news of great joy. People who walked in darkness have seen it. Good news of great joy. Good news of great joy. The word has come into the world. Emmanuel, God with us. Holy God, we come to you today in prayer, in praise, and in worship, giving thanks for the incarnation. We thank you, Father, for coming in the form of a child. We praise you, Jesus, for the love and forgiveness that you have shared with us, and we honor you, Holy Spirit, as you lead us and guide us. We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, the first verse. You may be seated. Hope looked down and saw fear and despair. I will go there, said Hope. Peace looked down and saw war and anger. I will go there, said Peace. <laughs> Joy looked down and saw sadness, loneliness, and despair. I will go there, said Joy. Love looked down and saw indifference and oppression. I will go there, said love. The light of the world looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said the God of hope, peace, joy, and love. We light the Christ candle tonight as a reminder that God has come to us in the birth of a child and in the power of the Holy Spirit so that we might have life and have it abundantly.
Let us pray. God of hope, God of peace, God of joy, and God of love, teach us how to be reflections of your light in the world. Amen. Hi, Sammy. How are you? We keep meeting here like this, don't we? We, Yes. So tonight is a special night. We had talked before when we were putting together the manger scene. We had already put baby Jesus in. And we're going to hear some stories tonight about how Christ is born. But another story that we're going to hear tonight is about how angels appear to shepherds. And if you remember, we've been um, bringing the different characters from different parts because Mary and Joseph came from Nazareth which we put over there and we brought them and, and baby Jesus came so now it's time for the shepherds and the story when Jesus is born the shepherds are nearby do you see a shepherd anywhere I'll give you a hint it's on the piano <laughs> yeah it's, it is the only one on the piano so we're going to add the shepherd to the manger scene tonight. And then on Epiphany, in a couple of weeks, we'll add the wise men. Would you like to go and get the shepherd and um, put that on the, in the nativity? Thank you so much. As we are here tonight, we're going to hear the story of the shepherds and the uh, good news of great joy that they heard. And so thank you for helping us to put that together tonight. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the children that you have entrusted to our care. Continue to bless them, watch over them, and keep them safe. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we can see from the beginning of the Gospel of John, the story of Jesus starts at creation. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Although God good, sin and darkness entered human hearts. We have been troubled by despair, war, sadness, and hate ever since. But the ancient prophets promised a Messiah who would again bring peace and joy. Isaiah 9, 12-6 says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice before you as the joy at the harvest. They, as people exult when dividing plunder, for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
birth of Jesus is told most vividly in the Gospel of Luke. Listen as we read the story of Christ's birth from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors.
The Gospel of Luke continues. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, with which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had see, heard and seen, and as it had been told to them. The baby in the manger was God with us, the creator of all things, the face of God, and the promise that we will again experience hope, peace, joy, and love. Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3 says, Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. Well, what a joy it is to once again hear the promises of scripture tonight. I don't know about you, but for most of the month of December, I have been hearing one thing. Well, a couple of things. But the main thing that I've been hearing, especially the last three weeks, is, are you ready for Christmas? How many people have heard that over and over again? You go to the grocery store and check out. Are you ready for Christmas? You go get your hair trimmed. Are you ready for Christmas? You go buy shopping or you go to get Christmas gifts. Are you ready for Christmas? That has been the big question this year for me and, and something to reflect on. And there's a practical meaning to that, right? The are you ready for Christmas means did you get all your presents? Did you get them wrapped? Are the decorations up? Are the meals planned? Or did you buy or bake cookies? But for those of us who come to church um, regularly, the four weeks leading up to Christmas are a time of getting ready. You saw us lighting the Advent wreath, and that is a time of preparation. So we also, in addition to getting everything ready at home, try to get everything ready in our hearts. But I wonder, I wonder if we can ever truly be ready for the impact that Jesus has when he comes into our lives. Because as I'm listening and reading and reflecting on the Bible story this season, it certainly shows us one thing. Nobody is ready. Nobody was expecting God to break into their crazy and mixed up world and change everything. People were not expecting angels to sing and announce good news of great joy to the world. That day that Jesus was born, most everyone thought it was an ordinary time. Nobody would expect it that 2,000 years later, there would be groups of people all over the world gathered to celebrate and remember that night. There was a book that was popular when I was having my children. It was called What to Expect When You're Expecting. And it's for parents who know that in nine months or so, a baby will be born and it gives all the details of the biological processes and the family dynamics that are involved. And it's intended to help new parents get ready for what comes next. But Mary didn't have such a book. Mary, the mother of Jesus, didn't expect to be expecting. But an angel came and told her that she was favored by God and would like her to birth the Messiah. She didn't have a husband. She didn't have a house of her own. She wasn't making baby clothes. But suddenly, ready or not, Mary says yes. She agrees to carry the Son of God, even though the world is in political turmoil and being pregnant under such mysterious or questionable circumstances could have had her stoned to death. Mary was not expecting to be expecting. Well, and then there's Joseph, too. 
Uh, Joseph was certainly not expecting news that the woman he was engaged to was pregnant when he knew he was not the baby daddy. He was ready to call off that marriage until an angel told him that he's part of a bigger plan. He probably was not expecting to walk for three days across the country in order to be counted in a census while Mary gave birth among animals. He probably wasn't expecting that he was going to have to trudge to Egypt later as a migrant with Mary and toddler Jesus in tow. Ready or not, Joseph was responsible for parenting the Messiah and keeping him safe. And the people of Bethlehem weren't ready either. They were overwhelmed with guests because of the census, probably like some of the airports now with all of the flights that have been canceled, just overwhelmed with people trying to, to get to where they want to go or where they need to be. Everyone's house and guest rooms were full that night in Bethlehem. Nobody was expecting a young pregnant woman to give birth to a Messiah. They figured Mary was probably young and healthy and strong and she could sleep outside. And then we have the shepherds in the story as well. And they were not ready for the angels who were coming to sing to them. Sure, they were staying alert because it was their job to protect the sheep from the predators. They were out with the sheep when the angels shattered the silence with news and songs. And they didn't take time to clean up. And the Bible doesn't even say they made provisions for someone else to watch their sheep. They weren't ready. They weren't expecting. But still they got the news that Jesus came. And so if you're sitting here tonight and you are not ready for Christmas, you are not the only one. And if you are not ready for Jesus, you are just like everyone else in the Christmas story. Nobody, nobody was ready when God came and rocked their world. Even the most smartest and most religious and most powerful people were not expecting that God's son, the reflection of his glory, the exact imprint of his very being was going to be born that night let alone a child with ordinary parents in a country under the control of a Roman Empire, in a tiny town, in the middle of a mass migration, and a child in an animal stall. But God defies expectations. Jesus shows up whether or not we're ready. And so when we look at the world today, we don't know what to expect. We see a world that is full of political and economic and pandemic chaos. We watch newscasts and read commentaries filled with anger and judgment and self-righteousness. And then there's our own family chaos and drama. And we base our expectations on what we're seeing through our screens and our phones. But the world of Jesus and Mary and Joseph was not all that different than our world today. Broken political or economic or even family systems are not new, neither are pandemics. The story of Jesus' birth shows us something unexpected. And that's this, good news and great joy can exist in an imperfect world. The message that the angels gave us or gave them is as much for us today as it was for all those people who were not ready and who were not expecting change so many years ago. The angels came and said, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And that's the good news that we have come here tonight to celebrate. Ready or not, we can expect that Jesus is going to show up for us. And Jesus has never been a savior for perfect people or perfect societies. From the very beginning, Jesus showed up at all the broken places, a broken world, a broken family, a broken heart. If you have any of those, you can expect that Jesus will offer to help. He will offer healing. 
and offer hope. Jesus does not wave away our problems like magic, but promises to be with us, to make sure that we are not suffering alone, to build a community that can support us in whatever we are going through. Jesus is called Emmanuel, God with us, and we are here for each other. And this is the good news of the Old and the New Testaments of the Bible, that God is with us. God will never leave us or forsake us. God is going to show up in our world of trouble and offer to be with us whatever we are facing. The good news of great joy is that Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, shows up. Not for perfect people, not for good people, not for ordinary people, but for all all people. This story of Jesus' birth shows us that God does do the unexpected. Nobody was good enough or ready enough, and Jesus came to bring God's love and salvation into the world anyway. And you may not have come here tonight expecting that Jesus would show up for you, but he has. Our world may be a mess. Your family may be falling apart. Your health may be in decline. But 2,000 years after that night Jesus was born, there is good news for you. Because you are loved. You are forgiven. You are prayed for. Jesus Christ is here for you, whether you are ready or not. And I hope, I pray, that this news will bring you great joy, not just for tonight, but for eternity. Amen.
We come now to our time of communion. And the, the, the invitation to participate in communion is offered to anybody who would like to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O oh God. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, for the breath of life and for the steadfast promises and your faithful love. For the day is surely coming when all things will be made new through Christ, God of creation and eternity. We praise you joining our voices with choirs of angels, of people throughout time and space who come together to worship you in the incarnation. Lord, you are holy and you have shown us what holiness looks like in Jesus Christ, who came to be your living word, to baptize us with spirit and fire, to feed the hungry, to humble the mighty, to announce the good news of your coming realm. And so it is with thanksgiving that we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. And we remember the great mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has given, Christ has come again. And Lord, we come in this time of thanks and praise, and we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Holy and gracious God, with thanksgiving, we remember how when the hour had come, Jesus took his place at the table with the disciples. He said to them, I will not eat this Passover again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Jesus came together with his friends to share a meal. And he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to each of his disciples. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may take the bread. And in the same way, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he shared it with each of his disciples. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the remission of sins. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes again. You may drink of the cup. Every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Lord, we pray tonight on this special night that you will make us hopeful, thankful people who worship you, who remember the love, the peace, the joy, the hope of Jesus Christ. We may not be ready for you to break into our world, but Lord, we long for that good news and we long for that great joy 
and we're grateful that you come. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gifts that you have shared with us and that we are returning to you so that we may do your work in the world and that we look forward to the coming of your kingdom. Amen.
Christ the Savior is born. He has come whether we are ready or not. And we can rejoice. We have good news. We have great joy, even if we live in a difficult and broken world. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace as together the people of God say, Amen. Amen.